I was included in the third transport, which left on the 10th of June, 1942, from uh, Colin. How were you informed? Uh, again, it was the Jewish Council who informed me, and she had to inform you. The Jewish Council would receive uh, the advance notice about three weeks before, and then the so-called registration started, which mean, uh, which meant actually to type the transport transport lists, uh, and to and to to in uh, to include people in these three transports. Um, it was quite simple because in the first two transports were the people who didn't live in town Colin. You know, in the in the in the villages around or little towns around, because it was a county, as I said. And in the last transport, there were people who uh, who lived in Corin. Originally, I was not supposed to be included, and my family uh, in that transport. Working for this Jewish council, I was supposed to stay for a time being in Corin. But when all these punishment orders started, we were included in the transport on three days' notice, without any previous warning. And but all the other people helped us to put things together, and so we left as the other people left. And uh, when we arrived to Bohoshovice, after uh, that was on the 13th of June. Can we just go back to when you were told that you were going to be on a transport? What were you told was going to happen to you? Practically nothing. That actually uh, you are included in the transport and uh, before actually, and that was not told me, but generally it was said that uh, Terezin, which used to be a garrison town, had plenty of barracks and uh, are going to be a new home for the Jewish population of uh, Protectorat Bem and uh, and, the, and therefore in the very beginning the Czech Jews hoped to stay in, to stay in Terezin. Uh, in fact, it in fact it was just transit station, and so we were just we had to register. And the irony was, I was one of those people who typed the list. We have and they had to be typed uh, without any mistake, absolutely, uh, you know, exact and so on, so on, which was a, such a sort of terrifying situation. But. Uh, uh, this is how it was and how everybody had to accept it. And there were not many people who committed suicide. I don't know about anybody, mm -hmm. even in the situation. Did you ever have any correspondence from people on the previous transports? I don't did think so. Did they ever so. write to people I back don't then? think so. Mm -hmm. Probably they did, but I d it didn't reach me. Mm -hmm. But I was going to say, when we arrived in Bohoshovice, there was already one train prepared for the journey out of Terezin. And there were 750 people from these first two Colin transports. And this number has to be complemented by 250 from our transport. So it was a very a real danger that one would be included in this 250. So that was my first uh, experience with the selection. Selections always meant to the left and to the right. And you know, you did never knew on which way is the life and on which way is the rest. And, uh, but Oh, a lot of my friends and relatives were among these 750. And nobody returned. That was again one of these punishment transports. I think as soon as the people crossed the borders, they were shot. But even 
after a long uh, research after the war, it was not established if they were sh where they were shot or how they died. Nobody knew. Can you tell me how they selected the 250 to join the 750? They, it was always left, and this was the, and in this time, it was the Jews who were selected with 250. I managed what I to, to, to get my family out in this way. And at that time, the Jewish authorities in Terezin still pract practiced such a sort of uh, uh, rule that the families shouldn't be broken. And uh, I was engaged at the time, and the daughter of my fiancé, uh, so sorry, and the sister of my fiancé was already in Terezin. On that ground, he was excluded from the transport. Then I was his fiance, therefore I was included, and so I managed to get my parents out. But that was a very, very short, uh, you know, a very, very narrow escape. It happened to me later several times, and uh, and otherwise all the people had to the, the two hundred fifty had to go, and because the transport had only seven hundred people, the transport. The, uh, from Colin to uh, to Terezin, the last one. So the possibility that we could be among these 250 was quite big. So, what prepper? Or what did you take with you? Did you take anything with you uh, from Colin to Terezin? Again. There were this, uh, um, the help of the Jewish communities. They give some sort of guides, what to take, what not to take. Uh, and uh, we hadn't got an idea where we were going. I sometimes feel that the Jewish authorities, the very high ones, knew, but I don't know. And uh, so we took... Uh, practical things. We were advised to take, say, dry spirit to be able to cook, some sort of food which will, which will not perish, which you can eat after some time, uh, good shoes, practical things. We were allowed, allowed to take 50 kilograms with us, 50 kilograms. And uh, so we tried our best to take those things which will help us in the future life. Did you tell anyone uh, that you were leaving behind? Did you have any conversations with the non-Jewish people? Of Not Berlin? only I told them, because a lot of people, I, I was very lucky in one point. I usually had very good friends. And not only that I told them, a lot of people uh, we, we took our things to the people and they kept it for us over the over the war all the time. And this was quite a bit of things. I remember the father of a friend of mine, Georgina, he, brought, he came with a little, such a sort of village uh, card and we put on it what, uh, what we could and they kept it for us. What sort of things did you put on the card? Oh, you know, the household things which my mother, so they were, you know, uh, and then dresses, and she had already uh, um, the things for me, should I marry, and all these new dresses, and all these sort of things, towels, and you may, you name it. So all that we managed to, uh, to and then I got it after the war, of course. Mm. Did you <coughs> manage in your 50, Kilograms, kilo. Fifty kilograms. Yes. Um, did you manage to take any Jewish artifacts? No. Any religious candlesticks? No. Or? No. No. Right. Who was with you when you went on the transport? Who was with you? With me were uh, were my parents and uh, my fiance and his family. Plenty of friends and people whom I knew. 
Was there anyone special that you left behind? All my Czech friends. <coughs> Sorry for that. Did they know you were going? Oh yes, they knew. They knew well. They came and helped and cried and the night before. Right. Okay, thank you. We'll close there. Erna, you were now on a transport to wherever. How many people were on this transport? Uh, for, I mean, from Colin to Terezin. I, I think seven, over 700, I think about 740. That was the third transport from Colin, which was the rest of Jewish uh, population in Colin area, uh, when I say, uh, which made that Colin area Judenfrei, mm -hmm. but which I, when I say uh, the rest, those people who lived in mixed marriages with non-Jews, they were not included, if they were not in Jewish faith. That was one of these uh, part of the Nirnberg laws. Um, how were you transported? That was a train, usual passenger train. Passenger. Before, actually, before every transport, we had to go uh, to a place with the Nazi called Die Schleuse. Die, Sch Die Schleuse uh, is a German word for lock. So you had to go through this lock to be searched and then so we, uh, we actually came in the transport on the 10th of June, we had to assemble, and then on the 13th we went by passenger train from, uh, from Colin to Terezin. What to did you do for three days? We were searched and searched and new lists were typed. There were some Somebody, I don't know, had to inform the Nazi that somebody um, put some money in the shoes and the shoes were checked and the money was found and the person was beaten and there were churches, uh, searches and searches and waiting and waiting. And then on the, on the, in the morning, on the, on the 13th, we went, because it's not a long journey from Colin to Approximately how many miles? Mm -hmm. 58 miles. Um, and how long did it take you to get there approximately? I would say about two, two and a half hours if I have it right. Mm. How many people were in your coach? Or your in, on the, oh, probably, I don't know, probably 40, 50. Were you sitting? Sitting. That was just normal journey, yeah. you know, in comparison to what followed. Just yeah. normal journey. Yeah. You know, sad journey, but... Were otherwise, there any no. stops? I don't remember. I don't think so. Mm. Uh, were there toilets available for yes. you to use? Were there children amongst these? Yes. It was all children and, and very old people and all ages. Mm -hmm. Was anyone sick? I don't remember exactly, probably they were, and I can't recollect. Right. Um, were there any guards? And the, and the, all the coaches were locked, but uh, and they were only a few guards, but the coaches were locked. Were the guards in the coaches with you? They, went, they were going through the coaches, but I don't think that every coach had a, had a guard. But I can't remember exactly. Right. Did you know where you were going exactly? Yes, we went this we time. Knew that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, where did you arrive? Uh, to Bohoshovice. Right. That was that railway station. And the nearest railway station to Terezin, because the, uh, during I was not in Terezin when it was built, but later the uh, 
rail, the rails were extended, so actually Terezin had its own railway station. But in 1942, we arrived to Bohoshovce. Yes. Do you know the date of that arrival? 13th of June, yeah. 42. Day or night? That was a daytime. Mm -hmm. Right. Can you tell me exactly what happened when you arrived at the station? I already described that yeah. selection. So, um, as I said, there was a, a train with 750 people selected from the first two calling transports waiting for the journey to the east. And there was a, there were supposed uh, to com uh, to complement this 700 by uh, 750 by 250 from our transport because it was always 1,000 people in one transport. Did they select those people on the train or on the platform? No, when we were, we were on the platform, mm -hmm. there were people, and because everybody. Uh, hoped to go to the ghetto, but uh, uh, these 250 people had to be found and put in the train before. Were they officers or ordinary civilians who made this selection? If I remember collected, uh, correctly, it was. It were not Germans. It were the Jewish authorities. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Jewish authorities were, were given the strict order: two hundred fifty people, and it was up to them to select them. Right. What orders were you given? In what language? This time, I would guess in Czech, because this was still in Czechoslovakia, and. Uh, the ghetto was in Bohemia, so it was mm. Czech. All the administration at that time was Czech. Mm. Then it changed in Terezin, but uh, I wasn't there when it changed. After the selection, who, were the ne who, who was with you? After the selection, you know, my parents, my fiancé, his parents, and quite a lot of friends. Right. So what happened then? Then we were marched to the Terezin, to the ghetto itself, which I think was about three, four miles. And uh, we were allocated to, uh, to these barracks, because there were about ten of these different barracks, because I said before that was a garrison town originally. Um, built sometimes during the uh, Joseph II, the uh, Habsburg Emperor, um, for to defend the uh, Austria against Germany, against Prussia. And therefore, there was a lot of possibilities, uh, uh, to, you know, to accommodate a lot of people in these unusual circumstances. And therefore, it was chosen by the Nazis for this purpose, as a Terezin, because the Czech army was dissolved when the, when the occupation started, so they didn't need it for the army. Did anyone in the camp, uh, when you arrived there, try to communicate with you in any way? Um, in the, yes, there were people already, some people, who already were there quite a time, and uh, not a very long time, but quite a time, because Terezin as ghetto started in 1941, and we, talk, we are talking about 1942, so some people whom I probably knew from the past were there and talked to me, uh, spoke with me. What did they say to you? Can you recall? They told me about the, how, the, how it's organized and how one lives and again and again again about this transport to the east.